Hey. Hello, hello. What's going on? Do you have the package? All right, all right. Have you opened it yet? No. Should I do that now? Wait one second. Dang it. I've been waiting for this for like a week. <laughs> Before we open the package, let's introduce who we are. I'm Phil Edwards. Coleman Lowndes. This is History Club, where 50% of us know what we're talking about, where we roll ideas over in their grave. <laughs> You could tell the other guy ain't want no damn catchphrase, LMAO. Yeah, I'm a bad liar. Okay, so thank you first of all to uh, Jose Pedrino, Megan Long, and uh, Martin from Vegas for these catchphrases. We'll never speak of this again. Can I open this? I really want to open it. Can't open it yet. Mm. I just want to explain what we do here. On this show, each time one of us tells the story and the other person has no idea what's going to happen. And this time that's you. You're the person who has no idea. Right. Um, and I just want to clarify based on the comments from last time, got a lot of people saying, oh, what a fake conversation, all oh, this is, no, this is real. The idea right. that we could even try to act is actually a compliment, so thank you. Go ahead, it is time, open up the package. Okay. Oh, it's a wig? Oh, it's a raccoon hat? Are we talking about Davy Crockett? Ding, ding, ding! Yes! <laughs> wow, I'm keeping this, by the way. This is a gift. I love it. Yeah. Thank you, I Phil. I feel like that's definitely like just like rat hair and asbestos. In a lot of ways, he was kind of the first celebrity politician. Uh, and the way that he became this legend and politician is really complicated. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Fun. Born on a mountaintop in Tennessee. That is from the Disney movie and television series about Davy Crockett. And he was like a baby boomer phenomenon in the 1950s. I want to show you one picture too. This is a woman who was just making all the coonskin caps well over a hundred years after he died. These shows and movies, they actually changed the price of raccoon pelts, like the one that lady is working on, from 25 cents a pound to $6 a pound. Wow. You know, in 1960, John Wayne played him in the movie The Alamo. And he was actually a bit, really big celebrity when he was alive. This play here is reprinted and it's The Lion of the West. The play was so famous while Davy was alive and in Congress that he even went on Broadway and saw Nimrod Wildfire playing basically Davy Crockett in this show. Yeah, you don't really think of people gaining celebrity in that time period at all. That kind of opens up this question of like, how did he get there? How did that happen? How did he become this big celebrity? Is that map on screen now? Yep. So Tennessee is literally the edge of the map. People did not think of him as much as a Southerner as they thought of him as a Westerner. He's way out there. I'm gonna read a little from his autobiography. I'll just read you like a little quote. At so advanced an age, the age of 15, I did not know the letter of the book. He didn't know how to read by the time he was 15. He tells a story in the book of how he ran away from home from 12 to 15, just because it was like super fun. Yeah. It's these political tall tales interspersed with how awesome he is at hunting bears. David Crockett is not just a hunter and frontiersman, he's this political guy too. In 1825, he runs for the House of Representatives, uh, but he loses the first time. And then in 1827, he runs again and he wins. So bear hunting, raccoon killing, David Crockett is in Congress. Nice. David's big issue is land rights for the people who he represents. So a lot of the people that he represents are squatters. They find a patch of land that nobody cares about. They develop it. They maybe cut down some trees or they build a house. And David wants to fight for them to have the right to either get that land or purchase it at a reasonable price. That's his big issue. He's in the House of Representatives, uh, but we're not at this like legend status yet. And that is where my second prop comes in. Should I put my hat back on or wait? Yeah, sure, put your hat back on. Great. Okay, now that you have your hat back on, I will reveal prop number two, uh, which is this guy. See, right I was thinking about Andrew Jackson this whole time. Also Tennessee, celebrity politician, folksy, man of the people, big personality. Yeah, you're dead on, man, you're dead on. I mean, Jackson is like the Mario to David Crockett's Luigi. 
David would hate to hear that. Can you just tell me a little more about like what you know about Andrew Jackson? The night he got elected, he threw a huge party at the White House and everyone like notoriously just got absolutely wasted and people were like falling out of windows and just like totally trashing the place. Jackson is from Middle Tennessee, which is a little bit richer. Uh, so he's on a plantation. And then Crockett, they're from this frontier. They are poorer. You know, I should mention that throughout his life, there were periods when David Crockett owned slaves too. And so David does end up in the House of Representatives uh, while Jackson's in the presidency. So David's big issue is that land bill and Jackson never helps him on it. And then they fall out at some point. A lot of historians point to the Indian Removal Act, which is the Trail of Tears. So that's the forced removal of Indian populations. David Crockett actually publicly opposed that. Where's my prop? Okay, so right here, paper money that Andrew Jackson is on. He hated paper money. He wanted people to be carrying around gold and silver. The second bank of the United States issued the paper money. And so they were gearing up to renew their charter. Jackson did anything that he could to take out the bank, including using the veto power more aggressively than anybody else. I'll show you a classically awful uh, political cartoon. I was gonna ask if it has a ton of very tiny, illegible scribbling. All those people on the Hydra, they are part of the coalition that forms a party in the 1830s, uh, which is the Whigs. And so Jackson starts making this his signature issue. And that's where we come back to Davy Crockett. At this point, he hates Andrew Jackson. He's like, Andrew Jackson is a tyrant. He's a bad guy. Suddenly, Andrew Jackson has these enemies in the Whigs. So they are not the most obvious allies to David Crockett. At the same time, they are the enemies of his enemy. And so he becomes their friend. The Whigs had this like superstar brand to work with. I don't know if you remember that play that I brought up in the beginning. Who does this look like to you? David Crockett. This is actually James Hackett, who is the actor who played Nimrod Wildfire in the play, The Lion of the West. As far as we know, like patient zero for the coonskin cap is this actor playing David Crockett in a play. Crockett ends up making this alliance. He ends up turning into a pawn in this central banking war over the second bank of the United States. Uh, they might have wanted him to run for president. Possibly they wanted David Crockett to just be an attack dog. I think he totally just got suckered. He got sweet talked by some guys. That's it what it like, sounds like to me. Hey, yeah. here, have some whiskey, Dave. Like, yeah, Dave. <laughs> let me tell you what, man, you could be president. AJ you know? sucks, Dave. We can yeah. take him down together, my guy. I mean, that we don't know that. That's what, that's what I believe. I, I mean, no, I think that sounds right. I think that's the simplest explanation. David's biography comes out in 1834. He starts leaning into the myth. This is a portrait in 1834 of David Crockett that he was able to kind of art direct. He's wearing a buckskin outfit. His hat is meant to be a more man of the people type hat. He even chose the types of dogs because they were more homely hunting dogs rather than the kind of stately dogs that were typically in portraits of the time. Totally. By all reports, like the Whigs are the ones who push him to write his own biography. And then after that, they go even further. They actually sponsor a book tour all around the Northeast to give speeches against Andrew Jackson. There are other books that come out and they actually ghost write some of those books. Davies rising up with the Whigs in tandem and then they lose. Uh, Andrew Jackson wins and when the bank gets squashed, David Crockett gets squashed too. David Crockett loses his congressional seat. After that, he runs away. He goes out to Texas and just a year after he's out of Congress, in 1836, he's dead at the Alamo, executed after being captured. Oh, good, you're wearing the cap. Oh yeah, no, 100%. <laughs> it's really itchy. In 1956, those coonskin caps were selling at 5,000 a day. Actually, yeah. So, why do you think he became so famous like a century after he died? A lot of the pictures I'm gonna show in this video come from Davy Crockett Almanacs in the 1870s. There was a play by a guy named Frank Mayo that was all about Davy Crockett. 
the myth trickled along a little bit longer. And then Walt Disney is trying to figure out themes for this new park that he's building that's called Disneyland. He has different worlds that he wants to include in it. He's got Tomorrowland and he also has Frontierland. And reportedly he just sends people to the archives and they come back with Davy Crockett. Growing up, I didn't really know much about Davy Crockett other than the coonskin cap and he's like an American frontiersman and a cartoonishly American icon. I think it's so interesting that we'll never know what really motivated him. You know, whether it was such purity that made him cross over to the Whigs because he really believed that Andrew Jackson was doing the wrong thing or if he was just playing this game to try to get ahead. And then why was he trying to get ahead? Maybe it was to help his constituents, but maybe it was to like have the sweet life of being president. And we just don't know what's true about his heroism. There's more to uh, David Crockett's legacy than just a hat. In 1841, David Crockett's son went to Congress. He got elected and he went to Congress on behalf of his late father and a version of the land bill finally got passed. So he did accomplish something in the legislature in addition to making this permanent imprint on our culture. I, I was trying to think of how we can uh, involve the commenters on the next episode and I have, uh, I've made the decision that on the next episode where I am the person researching and writing it, I'm going to ask the people in the comments to choose the next continent that I will pick a story from. That is my challenge to you. Pick the continent that I'll draw the next story from, for my end of uh, History Club. Mm -hmm.